Hi everyone, I'm Jennifer Van Alstein and today I am talking with PhD student Jennifer Adams. We are so excited to actually be having this conversation um, in person that we're getting to do this because we started talking about this a while ago. So I'm so excited she's joining me here today. She is an Instagram influencer, a PhD student, and a mental health therapist. So we're going to talk about all of that today. Jennifer, would you mind just starting us off by introducing yourself? Yes. So hi, everyone. My name is Jennifer Adams. I'm an associate marriage and family therapist here in California, uh, depending on where you guys are listening from. Um, I specialize in trauma healing. And what that means is I not only talk my clients through um, trauma or traumatic memories, but I also help them to physically and if it's applicable spiritually, walk through letting go of that trauma. Um, I actually was originally a journalism major back in Florida, and mm -hmm. I just remember taking an intro to psychology class, fell in love with it. I mean, the study of why people do what they do, obviously it interests all of us. You know, we don't even have to have a degree to understand that, right? Um, and then I also, on the side, I do content creation for different brands, uh, different clothing companies, that kind of thing. I run my own marketing agency now, and I am a PhD student uh, doing trauma and disaster relief work. So a lot of uh, juggles in the air. <laughs> That's so much. That's like so many different things at once. And I love that yeah. um, you like recognize some of your strengths when you were an undergrad, but now that that's turned into something that's specialized and, 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 a, and a focus that also is something you will talk about on Instagram, that you'll talk about mm -hmm. on social media. Um, and it's really a part of who you are and the message that you share. So Definitely. that's one of the reasons I was really interested in having you on the show today as a PhD student who's also doing this kind of mm -hmm. influencer thing and also starting your own business as a marketer all at the same time that's fascinating so I yeah a lot of dive in right a lot <laughs> of students that I know are also entrepreneurs as well um, mm -hmm. and then of course we're struggling with our own mental health um, right now with COVID-19 you know we're struggling with our own anxiety depression fear we're going into the holidays that's gonna be really hard as well um, and then to not only manage that, you know, I'm managing clients that are going through that, you know, also a business that some parts did have to stop and some financial setbacks. But I think the most important part is like, if you're doing what you love, it's, it's going to give you that motivation to keep going or at least reach out for help, especially as a student uh, in times like this, which I definitely had to do even with my own university when COVID hit. Oh, it's great to hear that, you know, you needed resources that maybe you would mm -hmm. recommend to other people as well. Um, I'd actually, I'd love to talk more about your Instagram and just kind of hear yeah. about how you got started. Yeah, so it's kind of funny. Back in Florida, um, I heard nothing called influencer or content creator. I had never heard of that. Uh, and in Florida, I just did, I used to do a lot of modeling. So I would just post like, you know, just local modeling stuff, fashion shows, different things like that. And just, you know, post little products that you buy yourself and you post it up on Instagram, like this is the best mascara I've found, you know, <laughs> um, those little things when Instagram first launched. Uh, and then I moved to California and it's, it's basically a very fast paced uh, lifestyle. A lot of people are on the internet and networking and just different things. And I heard the word influencer and I'm like, well, aren't you kind of like modeling with the product? <laughs> but I guess that's what everybody calls us an influencer. And in the beginning, I was just doing it for fun. Um, and I knew that any platform that I had, um, especially with my mental health background, I wanted to bring a sort of empowerment um, and no comparison kind of thing. Like just saying like, if I can succeed, you can succeed. And I've always loved fashion and makeup. I grew up on thrift stores. My mom would always take me to thrift stores. So I'm a hardcore thrifter. <laughs> tell you where the, all the great locations are in California. <laughs> um, and I just was like, well, wait, with me being a therapist, you know, an associate therapist specializing in trauma, and we're able to use these platforms to really talk about anything. Mm -hmm. And then I also love fashion and beauty. Why can't I kind of blend those worlds? Because you know, makeup or clothes that we wear can really influence our mood and our mental health. 
Um, mm. You know, I've struggled with anxiety and depression since eighth grade, and thankfully I've had a lot of support system, God bless my therapist. Um, and it's kind of one of those things that there's so many different avenues that can boost your mental health. And if I was using Instagram, I just wanted to empower others. Um, mm. And that's kind of where it started. It took off and I was shocked. <laughs> But I think a lot of my followers just related to the fact that I'm a dork. I also like to read a lot and research and talk about, you know, common themes that people would talk about. Uh, just because I'm a therapist doesn't mean I can't talk about the latest Netflix show or, <laughs> you know, anything like that. Um, and people related to it. Mm -hmm. And it just took off. And it's now this beautiful community where not only do I feel supported, but I can support others. And I'm just blown away by my followers and things that they've shared with me. And, you know, they've asked out for resources sometimes. And it's just, it's been beautiful. It's been beautiful. I'm very honored, honestly. Mm. So that's the uh, Runway Red LA account that you have. And um, one of the things that I liked, I actually scrolled all the way back to the beginning of your account uh, to prepare <laughs> yep. for this interview. I wanted you can see to see why I started getting a little bit better. <laughs> I, I wanted to see how you started kind of talking about yourself, especially. And one of the things that I love was that you were very open about who you were. You were open about, you know, the, the work that you were doing um, in terms of your practice, but also in terms of yourself as a student. You would talk mm -hmm. about books you were reading or some topic that you found interesting. And people really connected with that. People were engaging in the comments. People yeah. were really interested. Give me one second. Apologies. You're good. Yeah. All right. So one of the things that you said in an interview was that you bring mental health into the fashion and beauty realm for various brands. I love that you combine all of those interests. Yeah. When it comes to mental health, especially when I've either done marketing for brands or when I've just created the content uh, for them, whether it's gifted or paid, um, I'm very specific on which ones I say paid for because you can get paid for anything, honestly, these days of promoting. Um, but I'm very careful because not only am I a therapist, so I have to watch what I promote. Um, mm -hmm. But also it comes down to, do I believe in the product? Um, I'm not one for selling out. And so when I wanted to kind of combine the kind of industries, the, the, the mental health of therapy and the fashion and beauty, it's just because I started talking to a lot of my friends who were influencers and I was getting inspired by them. Um, and I was just like, well, we can talk about these things. Like, mm. yes, it's awesome to post a picture of you looking pretty and you looking fire. But if you can add to someone's life, I feel like that's just such a powerful thing to do. If you can give them tips. Um, I started giving people tips on like boundaries and dealing with family. I'm going to do one on, you know, coping through the holidays. Um, and people just started really relating to that. Um, so mm -hmm. I just kind of curved, you know, my content to focus more on that. At first, it was just kind of posting product reviews, that kind of thing. Um, and then I just made sure to when I'm disclosing things like especially about my own mental health, that, you know, if a client were to find it, would I have an issue with it? Because um, you have to be very careful about what you disclose as a therapist. And mm -hmm. I only disclose even in sessions with my clients as long as it's appropriate for them. You know, I'm not going to be making the therapy about me. I have my own therapist for that. Hmm. So if I can relate to them about anxiety and depression and say, you know, I, you know, I've, I've been depressed before. It's really a struggle to get out of bed and shower and eat. But, you know, I, I hear that you are kind of, you know, not always forcing yourself, but you're choosing to get out of bed and that's the strength right there. So I'm able to have that kind of empathy, that kind of understanding. And I just translate it to posts as well. And I've, I've gone on there and talked about some really rough stuff before, like boundaries with family and um, mm -hmm. intimacy is not just sex and uh, divorce and abuse is not just physical. So I've definitely um, just went on the platforms and talked about that. 
That's amazing. Can I, can I ask you, you said that when you were in Florida, you hadn't heard about influencers before. You didn't know um, that, that maybe even people who did that existed. And then mm-hmm. when you moved to California and kind of started doing that, you started posting reviews of products and reviews of different brands, um, honest opinions. Did you have mm-hmm. an idea at that point that you wanted to be an influencer, that this was something that was maybe a goal? No, at that time, I just wanted to have fun with it. Um, it wasn't until probably two years in or so that I was starting to realize that people can get paid, Mm -hmm. um, for promoting certain products that they actually believe in and they already buy. And I was like, wait a minute, hold on. (laughs) (laughs) Um, so of course, I mean, we all have bills to pay, but I mean, if I can get paid promoting a company, like I did a collaboration with CVS, uh, hello, when the pandemic hit, of course, we're all getting our nail polish and hair care and, and makeup and stuff like that. And even just essentials of food um, from CVS. So I was like, well, why not? You apply, of course. Um, the brand has to choose you. Um, and then, you know, you have to agree to some of their terms as far as like the paid collaboration. But I really didn't make it a business until about two or three years in. Um, and now I've been doing it successfully for about, I want to say successfully, because this is when I actually started taking it seriously um, <laughs> and understanding kind of the business mindset and kind of researching into that. I'd, I'd probably say I'd been doing it for about three years now. Okay. So, so that's yeah. more recent um, where you'd say mm-hmm. you, you've been doing it like intentionally and that you've yeah. been thinking more about the business side of things. Can yeah, I ask- especially the, the content rotation of how your feed looks. Uh, There's so many different factors. I even teach a workshop on this, but um, you know, so many different factors on how to connect with brands, what to specifically say. You're not just going to write a cold, you know, email and then expect them to say yes to you. Instead, I'm someone that has sensitive skin. So if I'm Mm. speaking to a skincare brand that I've wanted to try, um, you know, I'll reach out to them and say, you know, I looked up your reviews. I have sensitive skin, so it's really hard for me to find find foundations. Uh, Do you have any samples that I can try or test out? And, you know, they'll look at my account, of course, and they'll be like, wow. And this was way before I had 20K, so this was like under 10K. Mm -hmm. They would be like, yes, we would love to. And, of course, exchange for a review. Unless you're unhappy, let us know. Um, So that's kind of where I started realizing and shifting my focus once I kind of matured and got a little bit more comfortable in California, you start to see like, oh, wait, like you can actually make a business with this. And if I can make a business empowering people, sign me up. (laughs) Yeah, that sounds really interesting. I actually don't know much about influencers. Um, I'm not an influencer myself. Um, And I actually made an agreement with myself when I started my blog, like I'm not even going to take sponsorships for that. Mm -hmm. Um, Just because I do work with so many PhD students and professors who kind of have an icky feeling about it. Um, I get that. Yeah. And so, so the, one of the reasons I wanted to have you on the show in particular is because you are an influencer in that beauty space and you also talk about mental health. You talk about your research, you talk about yourself as a person, as a PhD student, all of those Mm -hmm. things can be true at once. And I thought you'd be Mm -hmm. a great person to kind of tell your story about that because there is kind of a stigma around what being an influencer is um, and and what that really entails. And it it sounds like it it takes a lot of work. There's a lot of steps to the process. It takes a lot of work. And you also, um, in the social media realm, I've been to PR events. I've met the influencers that are very famous, uh, famous makeup artists, famous celebrities I've met. And you have to definitely be careful because with anything, right, there's, there's some positives and there's some negatives. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to social media, you definitely have to be careful um, because there's a lot of comparison. People only show the highlight reels. So you're only seeing some of the positive stuff uh, half the time, usually most of the time. And so with social media, whenever I like talk with somebody or consult with them, it's like, well, what is your purpose for social media? what are you wanting to do? Um, Some people want to do health and fitness. Some people want to do, you know, exactly what I'm doing. Um, And in the beginning, I was, I was scared because there wasn't an industry where therapists were online. Right. Um, I know there's some therapists that are on YouTube and they talk about mental health and they do videos like that, but there was really no one 
on Instagram that I knew that was a therapist and also doing fashion and beauty. So I took a big risk and I was very nervous um, because I didn't know if my employers found out if they would be supportive. I don't post anything risky. So I definitely make sure of that. Um, I don't always have my full name on there just because clients can go crazy, but I've, I've definitely now that I've been in the therapy business for so long, um, you know, once you're careful about everything that you share online, cause it can be researched, even if you delete it, mm-hmm. it's still there. Um, kind of having that mindset has been really important in that. And also just making sure that I'm taking care of myself, you know, when I do social media and especially as a student, I'm not going to be on Instagram, you know, 20 hours a day. I work 8.30 to 5, <laughs> Monday through Friday. That is my set schedule. The marketing agency stuff I either do on my lunch break or right after work or on the weekends. Uh, my PhD homework I do on the weekends, you know, except I'll look up articles during the week. Um, and I think when it comes to social media, you also have to be careful that you're going to have haters. Mm-hmm. You can be the nicest person in the world. And I'm nice to everyone I meet, but I have definitely learned, especially even as a therapist and even before I was a therapist, you can be the nicest person in the world and people can still hate you for no reason. It usually doesn't always have to do with you. They just don't like something or maybe they're jealous of, of something. Um, and so being careful and knowing that people will attack you. If you have something successful, you'll get attacked. Uh, as my mom <laughs> said one day I had a couple girls attack me online and they were like, well, you shouldn't be an influencer. You're a therapist. Stay in your lane. Um, They got pissed because they had 50K, 100K, and I had 10K at the time. um, And they were just like, you shouldn't be here. And I'm like, I've done nothing to you. Like, I don't even know you. Um, But because they were threatened by that. And a lot of them have, you know, public anxiety, you know, depression, different things. I think they were maybe worried I would go after the same brands or anything, but they were already so successful. And I saw them as very successful businesswoman. But if you have a light to shine, people are going to attack you. And I remember calling my mom and I was crying and I was like, I don't understand how people can be so mean. Mm -hmm. Uh, Now I have a backbone, but I was calling my mom and I was like, I don't get it. Like, I'm not doing anything against them. I've been nothing but kind to them. If I've met them at events. Um, And my mom was just like, Jen, you've made it. You, you have haters and uh, you know, that's it. Like if you're doing something right, you're going to have people that are against it. Um, I don't like the term haters uh, just because I feel like that's kind of like a comparison. Like I'm better than Mm. someone else but now with all of my training in psychology I I realize it has nothing to do with me um and even if I meet these people and I have continued to see them at PR events I'm still kind you know because I have nothing against them I'm still kind I'm still going to treat you with respect even if you hate my guts you know so that was the hardest lesson to learn about being an entrepreneur is that people will go after you. Um, and that was hard. That was like the heart, one of the hardest lessons. Cause I took that personal for quite some time. Yeah. Th- thanks for sharing that. I actually just wrote an article about dealing with negative reactions specifically on Twitter. Uh, mm. But one of the things that I, I found interesting about what you shared is that you did take it personally. It was something that affected mm-hmm. you so much. You felt like you needed to talk to your mom about it. Um, it was yeah. something I that- cried. I was very upset for like for I think a week or two I didn't even post because I was just scared they had gone after my Instagram and shared it and it's like how do you like they tried to block me from a group and pretend like they weren't sharing my Instagram but I you see when stories shoot up and you you see um how to go on a blocking frenzy but you have to do things to protect yourself yeah Mm. yeah so that was one of the biggest lessons that I had to learn is people are just not gonna like you and I definitely feel called in, in this uh, branding and just even as a therapist, you know, I, I want to see people get released from past traumas and hurts. And I, I really have a big heart for that. I want to open up a trauma center in the Valley mm. uh, of California because we really need it. 
and I just have a vision. I have a goal for it. And I definitely have realized if you're wanting to help people break chains, you're going to have some opposition, you know? Yeah, so. for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, can I ask, uh, what, what is your school or your, your employers know, or, or maybe think about your Instagram? Is it something that you've shared with them? Um, or is it something mm-hmm. that you just are cognizant of and then, you know, mm-hmm. you know, think about what you share? Yeah. When it comes to my school, um, my school's online. So it's, it's North Central University. Uh, and I'm doing my PhD there. So a lot of it is like online self instructed. Um, the only time I've had to kind of tell them what's kind of going on in my life personally is when I had to kind of sign up for the disabilities with my mental health. And then I was recovering from cysts at the time. So I was like showing them proof of being in the hospital. Please don't kick me out of the class. This is what's going on. Um, and I shared with them that I do social media, but it's kind of like an online school. So it wasn't like that much. When I was in grad school, people picked up on it and was like, they would look at my phone and they'd be like, oh my, oh my God, that's you. <laughs> because I don't wear makeup a lot. And, you know, <laughs> unless I have to see people or something like that, I'm not a super You, you don't walk girl. around saying like, I'm an Instagram influencer. No, <laughs> like, no, honey, it's our like, you need to respect <laughs> me. <laughs> oh God, I've met those. But, you know, no, I, I, I kind of don't usually tell people, even my friends at first, like if I'm meeting new friends, I usually don't tell them until a little later because I've definitely gotten the reaction of like, holy shit, you have how many followers? And like that kind of thing. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but I don't make it like a big deal. It's just right. like, yes, I've built the community, but like the numbers don't matter if you're not like, if you're being a jerk, you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and then as far as my employers were concerned, um, my current ones, at first I wasn't sure how they'd feel because again, I'm doing therapy. So I have to be very careful what I put online. Um, so at first I wasn't sure if they were supportive. I kind of downplayed it. And then when I got published uh, in LA style magazine for a hundred women in power, um, I brought a copy of it to work. My boss read it and I didn't even think if she was supportive or not, but her boss read it and cried. <laughs> oh. So, and they, you know, they started asking me, they're like, what are you doing online? And then they started getting like, whoa, like you're doing all of this. Um, So because of that, actually, um, they started finding out that I'm good at marketing and just good at writing and connecting Ah. with people that at work, they put me on a trauma-informed committee and then a diversity uh, and inclusion and and inclusivity uh, committee to make sure we're doing changes and things that are appropriate to include people of color and make sure like pamphlets, you know, how people come into our centers uh, and then the trauma informed is pretty self explanatory because I love trauma. Um, but I didn't think I'd get recognized. And then all of a sudden, you know, people talk. So it sounds like the now story. they're supportive. So it was kind of weird at first. <laughs> yeah. It sounds like the story and sharing your story actually helped them connect with you and understand what your strengths and skills were um, so yeah. that, that they knew uh, a better way to, to help you be more involved um, yeah. with your work. I think that's, I think that's great to hear that um, it actually yeah. helped you in a way. Not everyone at work is supportive over it and I've definitely well, gotten made fun of, but you know, I, I don't know what to say. I, I bring <laughs> free stuff to the office and if you don't want it, you don't want it. Like, <laughs> but you know, again, workplace dynamics, sometimes you have people that hate you, like you, whatever. But um, most of the time they've been like supportive. So it's kind of been like off and on support, nice. not support. I think but, that's, you know, I think that's kind of life. Nice. I feel like, I feel like that's how we are with everyone who interacts with us. Like people like some yeah. parts of us and, and maybe some, some others, not so much. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I the found stigma that- is there too, because you know, this is why I kind of started hesitating at first. I was really excited to like talk about it, but the reason why I started kind of hesitating to, to mention content creating, um, like I didn't, I stopped kind of using the word influencer sometimes Although now I kind of interchange it with influencer and content creator because some of the first reactions with people, because now everyone's an influencer, they tend to think that all think I'm better than them. Mm. Um, And I don't, Um, I definitely am not a perfect person. No matter how many years of therapy I learn, do whatever, I'm never going to understand what it's like to be in someone's shoes. You know, I can't speak to that. And also when it comes to social media, like 
I just, I just don't think I'm better than anyone else. Even if I had a hundred K or 50 K what's beautiful that I love is that we create a community and my friends have found other friends that are just really sweet and supportive to them online, you know? Um, but other than that, that's sometimes why I help, I hold back because people just make assumptions that I'm stuck up or, you know, whatever. But then when they like meet me and then they conversate with me, they're like, Oh my, oh my God. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, if you want like free skincare, like I have too much, come get it. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and then they're like, seriously? And I'm like, yeah, no, I'm serious. Like <laughs> dead serious. So, you know, then they kind of understand it, but then some people just quick to judge. So it's got pluses and benefits, you know? So it sounds like you've done content creation. You've done influencer work for some time. You've done it more professionally mm -hmm. for about three years, but now you've started your own marketing business. That's, is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Just recently, actually last year, <laughs> just end of last year, I started it. Yay. Congratulations. Yeah. That's so Thank exciting. You. Thank I you. also like that you have a separate Instagram for that marketing business and that, um, you are maybe a little bit more personal there. Like you share, mm -hmm. you share, um, longer posts there that, that would really help people connect with the, the story you're sharing, who you are and what you really bring to the table. Yeah. Can I ask, um, how do you start writing those Instagram posts? How do you what, like, what is the process for writing a post about yourself? Mm -hmm. On my own Instagram or the marketing one? Um, any of them. I think, I think it's similar. Yeah. When you're writing a post about yourself, it, it, they tend to be a little bit longer. They tend to be yeah. a little detailed. So I'm, I'm curious, like, how do you go about that? Yeah. So with my marketing agency, I definitely, am, I wanted to make that separate just because, um, you know, if I'm giving that to potential clients and stuff like that, like, yes, they can see my own personal Instagram and how it has 20, you know, whatever, uh, followers, 20 K followers, but then like the marketing, it kind of shows like, I'm kind of creating a feed to start giving tips and like different things, but not give away all my secrets, but <laughs> you know, just kind of like mindset is key. You know, that was one of the posts I did for my marketing agency and understanding someone's purpose if you're working for a brand. But then when it comes to my individual Instagram, the Runway Red LA, um, I just kind of think about what's going on in the world at the time. Um, especially, for instance, uh, COVID-19, I definitely wrote a post about how, you know, because we're not able to go outside, um, I definitely experienced sleeping issues or a little bit of a little bit of depression coming up again. Um, and needing to, you know, connect with my therapist and, you know, make sure I'm seeing her every two weeks and, you know, um, not being afraid to ask for help. I talk about that a lot. Um, and if you don't like therapy, there's online support groups. If you don't like online support groups, there's books. I mean, there's so many choices now that we have. Um, so I think a lot about what's going on in the world. I also pull a lot from either like my own life experiences. Um, for instance, I um, was uh, in a marriage that would, ended up being abusive and he turned to alcohol, unfortunately. Um, you know, not a horrible person, but just someone, you know, that has their own demons to face. Um, and unfortunately he chose, you know, not to face them and I had to get a divorce and a restraining order to get him out. Um, so I did a lot of research on narcissism. I did a lot of research on psychological abuse. Um, and so because I'm learning like this information and then I'm talking, you know, with some of the people that are, you know, on Instagram, um, I was like, you know what, I need to post this. So I definitely talked about how abuse is not okay. Um, and so I kind of relate it to something like if I'm going to write a caption, I need to be able to like kind of speak life into it or just kind of offer either tips or a personal kind of thing of not giving away too much personal stuff, but also being upfront and saying like abuse is not okay, no matter what it is. Um, mm -hmm. And just being blunt, honestly, and saying like, it's not okay, uh, whatever kind it is. Um, and you can't love someone enough to absolve their addiction you know, and I just kind of get straight forward. I'm like, you can't do that. And then I jump on stories and kind of go a little bit more in depth. And people have just responded, you know, they've shared, oh, I left a marriage that was abusive. He wasn't physical either, blah, blah, blah. So they'll, they'll relate uh, a lot to that. So those are usually where I pull from. Or, you know, if I'm reading something on um, research for my PhD, I actually, uh, 
I didn't know if anybody would respond to this, but I ended up posting like a certain research that I would find and I would be using it for my PhD assignments. Mm -hmm. And I would just post, like I would turn my camera around and just post a story saying, oh, I'm finding this article about spirit uh, possession and trauma related symptoms. If you want the link to it, if you're curious, like, let me know. And people would like actually like respond and say like, here's my email. I would love to read it. And it's not just therapists that are commenting my stuff. There are some therapists that follow me, but it would just be, you know, norm normal people, you know? Um, and it was great because they were like, oh, I really like this because you're finding like interesting articles about trauma and you can just email it to me and it's, it's free. Mm -hmm. Um, and I would talk about books that I'm reading, different things like that. So I pull a lot of inspiration from that. Oh, and from music sometimes too, because sometimes when you hear a song, you're just like, you're either like, oh, that's so <laughs> or you're like, yeah, it's like power, you know? So sometimes I'll pull quotes from there and make sure I cite them and stuff. So <laughs> don't need anyone coming after me. <laughs> so. All right. My next question is, what do you enjoy most about Instagram? What, what is it that you really enjoy that keeps you coming back, that ke keeps you wanting to spend time there? Mm -hmm. My followers, I'm just consistently blown away by them. Um, when I was going through my divorce, I was kind of sharing how hard it was. Um, I actually went on Instagram once. I was scared to do it, but I went on Instagram just... Um, Kind of feeling like I hadn't heard God's voice for a while and was very, being very honest about it and how it was like tough and uh, getting judgment from the church saying you weren't praying enough and all this other stuff. Mm. And I was just like, wow, there's a lot of guilt and shame for the women that like get out of these abusive relationships. And I was just talking about it. And then I went to the gym one time, heard a sermon online uh, when I was like working out and I just got on my Instagram after and I was like, wow, this message was really powerful for me. And I was actually like crying um, and just stating what I had heard. And oh my God, I got like 15 to 20 messages the next day, just being like, thank you for being vulnerable and, you know, sharing. Um, and then fast forward to now, the connections with people all over the world is, is incredible. Like I, I literally feel like they're my friends. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, because you just, you know, you end up supporting each other back and forth and that's been beautiful. Like, I, that's why I keep coming back is because it's like, you want to support your close friends, like the people that you actually know in person, but then there's so many other people that continue to support you and you just become friends. So oh, that's, yeah. been, that's been beautiful. And some of the messages that I've gotten when I've gone through hard stuff have really, really like helped me through, uh, really tough times, you know, and it's like one thing if your mother, or your, you know, brother, your boyfriend reaches out, but it's another when a complete stranger just sees, you know, some of the highlights and also sees you being vulnerable on stories, writes you a message. And you're just like, wow, I didn't even know I had that much impact. You know. And that people, people care so much that they're, they're taking mm -hmm. time not only to listen to your message, but to respond to it in a way that shows yeah. that they care and that yeah. they, they want to connect. Um, at, that's really beautiful. Yeah. I just think the power of the internet. Um, I grew up with AOL dial up. If anybody remembers that. The little oh. oh yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh my gosh. I do not, I do not like think about those days <laughs> much but I I remember like AOL hey, dial up and the internet coming around nowadays you know all these five-year-olds can just push and play with everything it's amazing <laughs> but but also kind of bad um but that's what's so interesting about the power of the internet you can connect with people all over the world um and then talking about mental health you're able to also like even for me as a therapist you know, obviously I don't give therapy and I put the disclaimers like, I'm not your therapist, you know, that kind of thing. I'm not giving you medical advice. However, you know, and I can't give you therapy if I'm your friend. <laughs> I can't give you therapy. I've had to explain that to a couple friends. Um, and it's one of those things, but I can give you resources. I can help mm -hmm. you find a therapist in your area. You know, I can teach you how to look on psychologytoday.com, type in your zip code. I can send you a couple profiles based on what you've, you know, shown me. I get that that stuff can be overwhelming. So I've actually helped a couple friends, you know, find their own therapists. And I think 
that's one of the benefits. Like you can use your platform for good or, you know, for evil in that sense. Yeah. And also like the things that you're talking about right now, the things that people were connecting with you over and that you were Mm -hmm. able to help them on, they're all things that wouldn't have happened if you had just had a traditional beauty influencer account because you have this extra message, because you are Mm -hmm. a trauma person yourself, because you're doing the research and you're in practice on the ground, it makes a big difference for how much people can really relate to that. So it does. It's been amazing, too, because when I first started getting invited to PR events, obviously, right now, they're not happening in person. Right. Um, I was definitely nervous because, you know, these girls dress up to the nines and they have their makeup like immaculate and their hair all immaculate and their extensions and their, you know, Gucci everything. And you're just like, I got like an $8 thrift store dress on. (laughs) I saw your, I saw your boomerang from the McAllen Manor and I was like, oh, yeah. that looks so amazing. Oh my God. I, I mean, I trip out when I get invited to certain, you know, high end <laughs> events. I tripped out with that one. I was like, oh my God, the Greystone <laughs> Mansion. Beautiful experience and beautiful event. Um, and it's just so great because when you do go to these events, I'm kind of seeing it from different perspective because when I go to these events, I notice, you know, the girls that are socially awkward or, you know, the ones that have to show up and have to, you know, kind of put on this very brave right. uh, face. I get it. Um, and I'm going there from kind of a perspective of like, yes, I understand what the brand's wanting, but also I'm looking at it from like a, like a therapeutic standpoint. There's a lot of people that go to these events that have super social anxiety. Mm -hmm. Um, I've met girls where they're alone and all I do is, you know, I don't care. I'm like not there trying to get a million samples or anything. (laughs) I'm like, if I get free gifts, I'm like, yay, but I don't always expect it, you know? Um, and so when I go to these events and if I'm alone or, um, you know, say I see another girl alone at the event, then I'm actually going to say hi. (laughs) Um, and because I've done that, I've actually gotten really close girlfriends of mine because I'll just, you know, we'll both be by like the snack table and like, I'm just like, <laughs> hi, you're just as pretty. And like, you know, like be a real human. Um, and you, you meet such beautiful people. So it's kind of been interesting in that way. And one event Paris Hilton was in and everybody was swarming you know to get a photo with her and I just thought in my head I was like I'm not gonna go you know my friends were like oh my god oh my god like go get a picture with her like this is so great and I was like yeah but guys like everyone's swarming to her like I don't know about you but I would be like ah you know yeah, it would be overwhelming and I know that she for does me. that all the time <laughs> and I've seen her documentary and I know she's been through I just saw her recent documentary and mm. oh if you haven't watched it I it's, haven't watched it yet yeah, the Paris Hilton documentary, it's free on YouTube, and she does, she's been through some trauma, and I kind of picked up on that a little bit, and I, you know, I didn't say hi to her at the event, I let her do her thing, she's at an event to, yes, be an appearance, and I know she's all over social media, and she knows how to rock her stuff, but I was just like, eh, and then it was funny, because I didn't, like, approach her, I didn't swarm to her, I didn't, like, do anything, um, and she actually, like, randomly smiled at me, and, mm-hmm. like, waved hi, and I was just like, <laughs> and just you know normal person I was like hi nice to see sometimes you, you even know? that connection sometimes that like moment of yeah. recognition of each other and just recognition yeah. of each other as individuals can, and there can were be more meaningful hundreds of people in yeah. that room yeah I mean the room was packed by the time she had already gotten there um and so when she walked in it was like people <laughs> were were packed back to back to back so you know it's it's very impressive but <laughs> I think more than anything, if you, if you know your purpose, um, you know, say you're talented at one thing or multiple things, I'd say go for it. You know, even when I was kind of attacked for my social media and that I should stay in my lane and just be a therapist, I was like, yeah, but if a client came to me and said that they were talented at baking and they were talented at like science, why can't you? go for both of them like if it's not harming someone it's not harming yourself and you know hopefully you're not going broke or anything like that (laughs) why not so that's what I try to tell people like even on social media you know they'll see my platform and they'll be like oh my god 
you're so successful. And I'm like, yeah, but this is years in the making and I'm still learning and I'm Mm -hmm. not perfect. And I'm still like learning different functions. I don't even know how to do TikTok. I mean, like (laughs) one day I'll learn, but you know, it's kind of like, take what you're passionate about and go for it. And then when you have bumps, because you're going to have struggles, I've had countless struggles. I was actually um, kicked out of uh, university because I got a low GPA due to depression. I fought it. I tried to say, like, here's proof. I'm in therapy. I was on antidepressants at the time. Um, But because of the low GPA that kind of fell over several semesters, they kicked me out. And I was halfway done with my Mm -hmm. bachelor's. And I remember thinking, oh, my God, I, like, I can't, I want to continue, and I can't. And I remember crying and feeling so depressed, and I was, like, already depressed. So that adds a whole nother layer when you get kicked out, and home life wasn't very safe, and different things were happening. And I'm just like, wow, what am I going to do? Mm-hmm. And then I started researching schools. I actually found St. Leo University, called them up, explained to them what happened, And they're like, oh, well, when you transfer, your GPA starts over. And we looked and your credits transfer. And I was like, oh my God, are you serious? Because I had literally uh, below a 2.0 GPA. I did. And I was able to get into that program, thankfully, and all like all my credits transferred, which was just a miracle. Um, And I ended up finishing my bachelor's degree. And then after the bachelor's, I had, you know, done good you know, with those classes, went into the master's. And I'm someone that my first week of college, which was what, August of 2005, I remember going to my first week of college classes at a community college and seeing people around me smarter than me. You know, they just got the material. I'm not good at math and science, but I'm great at reading, writing, marketing, that kind of thing, people. Um, and I remember feeling so stupid. Mm-hmm. I remember like crying and, and my mom picked me up at the time because I didn't have a car at the time. And my mom picked me up in the car and I remember bawling my eyes out and being like, I'm too stupid to go to school. I'm too stupid. And I remember my mom, a little emotional, she's like my biggest supporter. <laughs> but I remember my mom just like encouraging me and being like, you can do it. You're not stupid. And that really helped, you know, because not a lot of people have supportive parents nowadays um and sometimes you just need one person you Mm -hmm. know and I nowadays we make a joke of it being like yeah you my mom goes yeah you remember that week that you like cried and you told me you were so stupid and blah 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 she's like and now you're going for your PhD (laughs) (laughs) so I don't mind disclosing that kind of stuff right because what, like, how would that be harmful to someone else to say, yes, you have setbacks in life and depression, anxiety, you know, whatever your diagnosis is, you can have setbacks. But if, if I can do certain things, why, why can't you? I'm, I'm no better or at a higher level than you. Just because I have a master's degree does not mean I'm higher than you. So what can we do in your life to, to get you where you want to go? You know, and they, these aren't, you know, people that are just my clients, but It's like, well, why not? Why can't you do that? Who's telling you that? You know, so sometimes I'm able to be a little bit more to the point and Mm -hmm. and trusting of people who are not my clients to be like, you know, if these are friends, I'm like, hey, who who told you that you can't do this? You know, and like, who's telling you these things? If it's yourself, maybe you need some personal growth and some healing there. If it's other people, are they the ones doing the classes for you? You're the one sitting in those classes. You're the Mm -hmm. one doing that assignment. So you have to decide what you want and what, you know, if it's going to help. If, you know, I went to community college. If community college isn't for you, I tell people go to trade schools. You know, there's also, there's so many opportunities to get certificates. And, you know, it just depends on what you want to do. And thankfully, we're now in a generation that you you can do a lot of things and have access to it now. Um, you know, and I've also done a lot of research on people of color. They don't have a lot of the access that me as a white person does get. Um, and so I've definitely had to even do research on my own privilege um, and how I can be an ally and, you know, an anti-racist and, and all of that kind of stuff. So, you know, you definitely have to learn and grow and see 
what to be done. So thanks for sharing that. Um, of course. Let's see my next question. Oh, this is my last question actually. And it's, it's, it's kind of along the lines of what we were just talking about. You just mm -hmm. had some amazing advice about education and about moving forward. And mm -hmm. even when we have setbacks and trauma, just, you know, keep going because if yeah. that's you, if it's something that you want, if it's something that you have a goal for, there are things that you can do to move forward. And I really yeah. like that advice, but I'm going to ask you for some specific advice about Instagram. There okay. are so many grad students and PhD students out there who would like to be on Instagram. Maybe they've never mm -hmm. done it before and they're thinking about starting now. What advice do you have for them about getting started on Instagram? So I would definitely say kind of think about what you want to use your Instagram for. Is it going to be like friends and family and you just want to post pictures that make you happy? Go for it. You don't need to make your feed look all pretty. Um, just go for it. Have fun on it. Don't think about it, right? Like connect with family and friends, that kind of thing. Uh, if you want to make it a business or say you're a student and you want to share uh, writing tips or whatever, I would say definitely download like apps like Unum, which is U-N-U-M. Um, you can see kind of like, I use it literally daily to see what your feed looks like. And it is free. I use the free version because um, the paid one, you can like schedule out your post, but I kind of don't mind. I don't need to schedule them just right now. Um, and so I use it to see like what my feed looks like. Mm -hmm. um, I would also, a lot of people don't always realize this, but when you go on to hashtags, so if you're like brand new to Instagram and you're like, what in the world is Instagram, right? Well, it's a platform now that you can post pictures, videos, and reels, which reels can be like either videos or something you cut up. Um, the reels I'm not super talented with, so I just, I posted one to try it and I was like, eh. Um, <laughs> that was just me, but I can do lives and post those, you know, and that kind of thing. But hashtags are a really big thing on Instagram, um, especially if you're starting out and you have a smaller account. Um, the reason why I say smaller account is because once you hit over 10 K on Instagram, your engagement goes down um, because Instagram only shows your account to 3% of your followers. Um, a lot of people think that that's fake. And I have seen countless of my friends hit 10k when I hit 10k and then I've seen my friends that have 50k 100k they're having 50k and they're getting less than 3,000 likes okay I know these friends so I did ask them did you buy your followers or like you know I won't tell. <laughs> um and a lot of them were like no I didn't buy my followers and then as soon as I hit this platform boom and it's because Instagram knows you're making money you know and Instagram isn't always getting a cut of the piece so it depends on how many people engage with you. It's all this kind of like, they call it the Instagram algorithm because depending on how people engage with you, that's how Instagram is going to boost your post. So that's a big thing to learn if you're starting off is like, don't take it personal if you don't get a lot of traction at first. You kind of have to like build your way there. If y'all go down the page, you can see when my feed started <laughs> looking a little bit more professional. But you can see, you can even see some of my engagement. I used to get almost a thousand likes. So, you know, I, I, I don't mind, you know, saying that, but more than anything, start off with like the basics, post what you want that makes you happy because you're going to want to come back to kind of a platform that makes you happy, you know, um, and then use, learn like different apps and stuff like that, that work for you, which I believe Kavana and Unum looks really great. Um, I'm trying to think what other apps that I use a lot. I'm trying to think. Those two are great. Yeah, those are the those are the two that I use most frequently. Awesome. And I researched a lot from other people, so I would definitely do that. Pick a topic and go for it. Um, some people have asked me if I have two different topics, can I mix them? And I was like, yeah, why not? Like if you're doing fitness and you're fashion, like I why do. Not? <laughs> why not? Yeah. <laughs> why not? Um, and people have asked me like, why didn't you make a separate, uh, Instagram one for your brand, one for your therapy? And I said, well, right now I'm not in private practice. I work in community and mental health. When I'm in private practice, I will have to create a new one for private practice because it'll have to be specific, you know, to the, to the brand and all that kind of stuff. So in the future, I might do that because I've seen, you know, my, um, therapist do the same thing and she has a very successful business. So I kind of have learned bits and pieces. 
Another thing um, is if you're starting off on Instagram, there is a lot of um, classes that you can take that are really affordable. Um, there's also a lot of free, you know, classes that people offer of just like tips and tricks to go on Instagram. Google is also your friend. <laughs> um, Pinterest also has a lot of good ideas of how to get started on Instagram. So just, you know, doing some little research and more than anything, experiment on Instagram. Uh, when you have a lower account, Instagram doesn't really lower follower account on Instagram. Instagram doesn't punish you for deleting photos. Now, once you get over a certain percentage, which is usually 10K and up, it does kind of push down your next post because it's kind of like punishing you for deleting. <laughs> so I've had to like archive photos before um, of people who shall not be named, but <laughs> you know, and that, that ends up happening. So yeah, I would say those would be the best places to start. Thank you for sharing those apps. Also that being on Instagram should be something that you enjoy. So like write about what you enjoy mm -hmm. think about what you enjoy because then you'll keep doing it. Um, and, and also, and also just like, experimenting, being okay mm -hmm. with something maybe not working so well the first time, yeah. that's totally okay. Um, great advice. Thank you so much for joining me for this interview, Jennifer. Is there anything else that you'd like to share before we wrap up? Um, no, if you guys want to find me or if you ever need any uh, research or <laughs> book nerding out, I also love Doctor Who, so if you're a Doctor Who fan, <laughs> yes, or The Office, DM me. DM me all the memes and things that, you know, we'll, we'll chat. Um, but other than that, you can just find me on Runway Red uh, LA on Instagram and then uh, J Adams, A-D-A-M-S, marketing uh, on Instagram and uh, starting to create like websites and stuff. But other than that, I'm on there. All right. Thank you so much for joining me, Jennifer. Thank you so much.